Hello dear friends. You know how sometimes you're on a road trip and you take the time to catch up with the closest friends of yours and maybe some friends you haven't talked to in a long time and maybe you help yourself get through a little bit of a tired time on a long road trip? Well, this is me calling you. Except I don't have a phone to call you with. And I can't call all of you because whew, there's so many of you I've been wanting to talk to and life's been so busy and full in a beautiful way. But there's so many people, so many of you, so many of my friends who I just would love to connect with and so this is a new little experiment. I'm connecting to you to the best of my ability in this moment that I have. So those of you who don't know, I am walking right now from Canada to Los Angeles. It's a 1700 mile walk and I'm about 300 miles in. I just got to Oregon. Yes, this morning. I just got to Oregon this morning through the state of Washington. And a new development. I'm pushing this little stroller to take the weight off my back and my feet so that I can walk both barefoot and in my homemade shoes. So, a lot of you don't know what I'm up to because it's hard for us to keep in touch. We're all very, you know, so many of us are quite busy. This, this societal structure, this societal design is one in which keeps us so busy. And if we want to be present in the moment, then it's quite hard to keep in touch with everybody that we love. And so again, this is my this is my message to you, and, and I am talk I really am talking to you. I know there's numerous people watching this video, but I really am talking to you. I'm talking to all of my close friends, um, and all my dear friends, and all my friends who maybe we haven't even talked in a couple years. And at the same time, I am talking to all my friends, which is you, if you're watching this. But in particular, this is to those who know me and who, I, and who I know. Sometimes I can let the buggy go and it just moves downhill. And sometimes I have to catch up. It's a lot easier to do this when you're driving than when you're walking. So, as much as I'd love to hear what all of you have been up to, I can't. I can only share what I'm up to right now. But I love voice messages. So if you know how to reach me via voice message, send me one, specifically to the email. Some of my friends and I have been doing that and you know. If you know. Uh, but if, for those of you who don't, if you do want to send me a voice message, I can listen to it while I'm walking on this long walk. So I have four more months of walking, about 1,400 miles to get to Los Angeles. And, well, um, you know, one of the big developments is the book finally came out, Food Freedom, the story about my year of growing and foraging all my food finally came out. I finally published it. It was such a huge amount of work. I wrote at some of your places, you know, Ryan and Liz and, and Ashland and uh, Justin down in Costa Rica and um, Martha and Dan in Santa Cruz and Albert and Laura down in St. Pete and uh, what were the other big writing spots? Well, down in the Everglades, 
I feel like I'm, oh, of course, in Asheville at Wild Abundance, Natalie and Chloe. Some of, uh, you know, some of my dear friends who I love. And right now, if I wasn't on this long walk, I would be at Compassion Camp. I would have been at Compassion Camp and Firefly Gathering. Two of my, you know, two of the social gatherings where we come together to continue to develop into more loving, nurturing, wholesome beings. Um, Ella and Fi and Liz would be seeing you all there. And if it was this time last year, good chance I would have been in my homeland in Wisconsin and I would have been spending time with my dear friends Dane, hello, and Paul, and uh, Virginia and Kelsey, and of course my mom. I would be seeing you in Ashland right now. <laughs> this really is a message to, to, to all of you um, who I've named and who I haven't named. Um, and so I have a long walk ahead and when I get to Los Angeles, I am going to, well, I'm going to be getting rid of every single thing that I own, something I've talked about with quite a few, few of you. Dan in Asheville, we've definitely talked about this. We, you know, so I've been toying with the idea of complete, practice of complete non-ownership for quite, quite some time and I gave up on the idea, actually. I didn't think I was going to do it because once I did my month of foraging 100% of my food, I really got this deep connection to the earth in a way where, as you, a lot of you have seen, I've had a lot of things. You know, foraging equipment and gears and jar jars, and I've been traveling with a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, usually traveling with others in their vehicle because I have so much stuff right now. This is literally everything, every single thing that I own. The nonprofit, Regeneration, Equity, and Justice, does have books and seeds, and the nonprofit has uh, two computers that are being used by teammates. But so, so my life does have some physical things that I'm tied to, but I don't own any of those things. This is literally. All of my worldly possessions, and it feels great. And when I get to Los Angeles, I'm going to get rid of it all, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna have nothing for some time. Nothing physical, no material possessions. And that means, well, no computer, and obviously you all know I don't have a phone, but I'll have no computer. And I'm not sure what my relationship is gonna be as far as potentially logging in on other devices to make, or just making calls from, um, you know, a phone. I'm, I, I might, but I, I will be a lot harder to reach me for some time. And my hopes is to do at least a year uh, without a device, a computer a phone, any, any device, at least a year. I'd like to do two years, but we'll see. That's a kind of a dream at this point, but it's a dream I might be making true. But for my dear friends, um, that means if we're not in person, we might not be in connection. And I would like you to know that, and I know, I know most of you know this, but just because we're not connected um, doesn't mean I don't love you and think about you. And I do, and I do, I do mourn um, not being able to nurture some of my closest connections. Sometimes, but I really am trying to, as best of my ability, dedicate my time to being of service to, to earth and to life on earth, to people, to plants and animals, and to develop myself, and that takes a lot of silence, a lot of solitude, 
and that makes it just so much less time to focus on relationships that are that are really important to me but right now I would say the most important well it's not a matter of importance but the relationship that I'm focusing on the most is the one with myself um, I'm really working to become whole and complete inside so it's been 20 months now of practicing non-sexuality you know I was just going for a year uh, December 2022 20, I've seen a lot of you in this time and we've talked about this a lot of us and a year has turned into well it's getting closer to the two-year range actually now and I feel more whole and complete than I ever really have in my adult life or maybe my entire life it's been incredible practice and incredibly healing and nourishing and uh, I yeah that he that healing and that nourishment has really resulted in a level of balance and contentment and not so much yearning and craving and then of course there's been the practice of Vipassana, which is a silence meditation. I think I did a whole month of silence last year between the week long and here and the 10 day there and the few days here and there. And then this summer I did 10 day, or seven days of, for the first time, complete solitude with the earth. I found a little pothole lake in uh, Olympic National Park that had no trail in or out and you had to climb up and down a thousand feet uh, of a pretty darn steep ridge. I mean, we're talking, I was afraid. <laughs> and, you know, I'm pretty physically capable and I was, you know, if I, if I had a major accident down there, there was nobody coming except for the people who knew if I didn't come out in a week but that, that was a bit of time. It was a very beautiful experience. It was the longest I've ever been alone by d twice as long as I've ever been completely 100% alone without seeing another human. I had no lights, uh, no electronics, didn't bring my computer, of course, and I had absolutely no contact with the outside world. I didn't even see the light of a plane or a satellite. All I heard was some planes. And that's it. I was, I, it was deeply, it was deep. Um, had moments in there of feeling completely connected with it all. And just the, the separation dissolved and I was part of it. Um, I wasn't an other in the forest. I was one of the, one of the beings of the forest, just like they were. They didn't, I didn't have a belief that they didn't want me there, that they, yeah, I didn't have a belief that they didn't want me around. I was, I was, I was one of them. It was um, very meaningful. And part of the reason I felt even more one of them is because I've, as of earlier this year, shed my last industrial clothing item. Everything that I now have is homemade natural fiber and natural dye. So. If I'm micro, you know, if I'm shedding microfibers, they're all returning to the earth. There's no pollution. It's just plants or animals. And I'm loving it. Um, it has been a lot of work. I've had to sew them up a few times. And yeah, it's, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a beautiful part of the experience lately. So I've been catching you up on some of the most meaningful updates of my life over the last year or so. Of course, there's the practice of nonviolent communication and that has been incredibly healing and powerful and so many of us have been practicing nonviolent communication together. That's been, you know, I know about 50 of my friends have taken part in classes with me and I love you all for deepening your connection. I'm actually going to take a swim. 
I've walked about 13 miles and I am exhausted. I have five more to go. Got to get past these blackberry thorns. <laughs> Here, you can join me for a moment in the walk down. This is steep and super thorny and my natural fiber shoes are quite, they don't have much grip. Nice. The salmon might be running up this river right now. They're, they're majorly running right now. And as you all know, I love trout and salmon. I'm at, I'm at home when I'm with the salmon. Here's the river that I'm about to take a swim in. Wow. Beautiful. So, yes, the practice of nonviolent communication has been a substantial part of my life for the last three years and I'm so grateful to be on that journey with so many of you. Steve, <laughs> thank you for bringing that practice in my life. It's been so deeply meaningful. And so to my friends in the Asheville, North Carolina area, I love you and I'm thinking of you and I uh, so would love to be there with you. To my friends in Wisconsin, I, I love you and I would so love to be there with you right now. And um, I'm looking forward to returning another time and doing foraging and uh, just being together, swimming and being part of the, the earth there. To my friends in Florida, I love you and I miss you and I uh, have so many of you deeply in my heart. Pam, <laughs> we haven't talked for a little while but I, I, uh, I think of you. <sighs> so yes, to my friends in Florida, I hope to be back there maybe perhaps this winter. So to my friends all over the United States, what we call the United States, to my friends all over the world, my friends in Minneapolis, Nevada, um, I am thinking of you. And to my friends along the coast, now we can see each other. I'll be walking down the Pacific Coast Highway for the next four months from, from you know, through Oregon down to down to Los Angeles so come out and see me and friends all over the world you can come out and see me if you want you can walk with me I'm not quite ready for people to join because it's just been a lot to manage my own life morning till night busyness between the walking and the, the book coming out and of course the book my new book food freedom I've sent it to a lot of you uh, so a lot of you have it of, um, arriving at your door and if I haven't sent it to you I it, it may be because I don't have your address and it takes so much time to reach out to everybody to get their address so if you would like the book just go to my website and order it and if you so the book is available as a gift and so uh, to my close friends, to my dear friends, I'm wanting to send you a book as a gift. Um, you can use the code gratitude and then it will be zero dollars. Sh you know, the shipping and the, the book, uh, we'll, I'll send it to you. And, and um, Now anybody out there, all, all of my dear friends, I'd love to share the book with you. It's one of the most, if you want to know me over the last few years and really hear what's in my heart and uh, my view for the world, this is, this is, the, this is what um, I have right now to share with you and I want to share it with you. And you'll see a lot of you are in the gratitude section because I, I uh, really have an incredible amount of gratitude for you. So the battery is flashing red and I think that means it's time for me to uh, hang up, but I love you all so much. I'm so grateful to be in connection with you. Thank you for being a part of this journey of truth and integrity. Um, and thank you for your patience with me as I grow and develop. 
you all know my communications, I've struggled with my communications to be compassionate and empathetic over the years and I'm working on it and I appreciate your patience because I, I really am trying and uh, so many of us are trying together. So I love you all and uh, I'm, I'm, you're here with me. And of course, my dear friends in Southern California and San Diego and Los Angeles, now we've seen each other more recently, but I want to say hello to you as well and to my dear friends of the Port Townsend area. Thank you for hosting me for the last couple of months, to my friends of Washington, to Judy, to Libby, to Rebecca, to Greg, to Daniel, to Mark. Thank you all, all of you in Port Townsend for hosting me, helping me get the Food Freedom book out there. Um, I am so grateful for you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to all my friends, thank you for being on this journey of truth and integrity. I mentioned wholeness and completeness earlier, and that's another way of saying truth and integrity. I can't have wholeness and completeness without truth and integrity, so they're one and the same to me. But thank you all for being on this journey. That's been my big focus as many of you know of being getting into the highest state of truth and integrity and I'm working on it thank you for my thank you for being patient with me in this time thank you for being supporting of me in this and thank you for joining me for so many of us that are growing together so many of us we are growing together reconnecting with the earth reconnecting with community reconnecting with ourselves deepening our love our universal love, deepening, deepening our living mindfully and presently, our compassion, our empathy, our celebration of love, our gratitude, our relationships with the plants, relationships of reciprocity. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with all of you. Whether we've seen each other lately or not, I love you, I love you, I love you.